Hey everybody, happy Torch Thursday evening stream. Um, welcome to the end of a fairly chaotic day here at The Beating Dreams. It started crazy and it really didn't let up at all until, oh wait, it still hasn't. So, maybe later tonight. Maybe later tonight. Maybe after the stream, it will it will finally be calm here at The Beating Dreams. So welcome to The Beating Dreams Torch Thursday stream, starting at least closer to on time than this afternoon's uh, macrame stream did, because um, that was a train wreck. But um, thank you all so much who were, well, hey, it's a Scott. Hi, Scott. Oh, joining us Scott. from, it's a, yes, joining us from New House. New House? New house? In New House yet? Yes, now? Joining us from um, the north, anyway, from Chicago yeah. land. So, yay. Hi, everybody. All right, what are we doing tonight? We're doing this one. This is, um, I call the Whirly Gig Earrings. This is actually based on a, a pair of earrings that we got in here to repair. I kind of modified them a bit. The customer's actual earrings, but the idea, and then um, made this project. So, something that I am going to do different tonight, um, what I will say when I was making this prototype is putting the loop on the top was an absolute and complete pain in the ass. So we're going to do something a little bit different with the loop on the top for tonight's project, but everything else is going to be pretty much the same as the prototype. So let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's. Oh, in the garage. Hooray for... Um, watching the Beating Dreams stream in the garage. I don't know if that's cool or if that's, if I, I have no idea actually. I feel like there's a joke to be made there, but I just don't have the brain cells. I will say that I think- I used them all up on decorating. Scott doesn't know about decorating. He oh, wasn't goodness. watching last night. Somebody should explain to Scott. Oh, but he's on the light side of the force. Oh. Mm. I'm sorry, I think people on the light side of the force don't get to know about decorating. <laughs> it's unfortunate. They have to go back and watch. Yeah, they have to they have to go back the swearing before nine. <laughs> Cheers, Lori. I do have champagne because we had one of our lovely clients who always brings champagne with her. So they um, if you saw I don't because Allison drank it all. I know. Heather does not have champagne. you're no we didn't do anything, Scott. No, there were there's a joke. But but all the people who could explain it to you are on the other side of the force from where you are currently. Also, that's a little self-centered. It was more just a general um, <clears throat> boy that was being discussed. Yes. But um, anyway, huh, things and stuff. So. <laughs> all right. Decorating is now approved by ASOS therapist. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I, you're, okay, your therapist officially sounds cool. And Lord, everyone these days needs a good therapist. Okay, so, tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. All right, it's a torch tutorial, so there's a bunch of tools. Let's start with supplies. Hopefully, I have more of them in front of me tonight than I did um, this afternoon, because once again, terrain wreck. Luckily, there were not any actual wrecked trains involved in this afternoon's tutorial. I think that's the best thing I can say about it, honestly. Okay, so supplies. You are going to need wire, and I decided to go with actually 18-gauge wire. For this, I've got 18-gauge sterling silver wire that I am using for... All right, so you guys, switch sides. So somebody, whilst I'm talking about supplies, <laughs> please explain uh, to SBD84 about decorating and have a good old time. I'm going to talk about supplies. Uh, so <laughs> thank you, Heather, for jumping on that grenade. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm not reading the comments because I have to actually do the tutorial. All right, 18 gauge sterling silver wire, as we know, when we are um, soldering, fabricating, Using flames to um, join metal together, we have to work with alloyed metals. Anything plated or filled is not going to work. It's not going to give us as pretty a product. So sterling silver, 14 karat gold, brass, bronze, copper. Those are your options. I'm using sterling silver tonight because it's easy. No super pickle required. Um, silver tends to be my cop out, especially when I'm in a hurry. So um, I've got sterling silver 18 gauge wire. I've got a little bit of um, easy solder going on. You could use extra easy. 
you could use medium too. It's it's really a one. It really is a one joint per earring, especially 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 um, since I'm eliminating this solder joint here. I'm, it's just gonna be a closing of the joint, not an actual addition of a ring. So. Any solder really will work. Um, I'm going with easy tonight. And of course, if we are going to make a functional pair of earrings, we are going to need, wow, something you can't see because my skin is so white, a pair of ear wires. You can make your own or you can um, use pre-made. Now let's talk tools for a minute because, of course, it's a soldering tutorial. There's a bajillion tools. If you solder or if you're used to watching these tutorials, chances are pretty good. Oh, just wait, Scott. It gets better. <laughs> I think you should save the, the big eye face. Like, I feel yeah. like you're not going to... I feel like the big eye face, like, you're going to have to top that somehow. I don't know that there's an emoji that's going to be appropriate for the rest of this. Um, someone who runs this stream. It's like this hilarious... Yesterday was like old Dallas home week here at Beating Dreams. All of the, like lovely old school Dallas women with their old school Dallas hair and etc. And um, well you might not however but but she was talking about when she was a, a sales clerk's assistant at Neiman Marcus and she was so funny she's like well I'm not gonna drop any names but someone came into Neiman Marcus whose husband owns a football team here in town. <laughs> Hilarious. Any, anyway apparently Said said person bought an eight six thousand dollar jacket and then let it sit at Neiman's for six months because she forgot she bought it. I'm like, if I'm spending eighty six thousand dollars on something, it's either going to be real sparkly, I'm going to live in it, or I'm going to drive it. Lame, lame, extra lame. Definitely needs a better name, which we fixed. Okay, so torch. Of course, if you are fabricating with sterling silver. 14 karat gold, brass, bronze, or copper, you need a torch. You need an open flame. You can't do this with a soldering iron. It has to be a torch. So I have, of course, my blazer butane torch, which I love. You're going to need flux. We'll talk about what that is and what it does when it's time for us to use it. You also need a crappy paintbrush with which to apply your flux. You're going to need a pickle and a pickle pot. I got mine off camera heating up. I'll talk about once again what that is and what it does when it's time for us to use it. You're going to need a bunch of pliers. Okay, you're going to need your basics. Okay, your basics are going to be your, your standard round nose your chain nose, which are the flat ones, and your wire cutters. And then you are also going to probably want these, okay? Um, these are <laughs> bail making pliers. Um, the great thing about bail making pliers is they're exactly what we need for this particular um, conundrum here, which is we've got two pieces of wire that are fairly, hi Sophia, um, that are fairly far apart that we need to curve in a, the same curvature. So, right, oh my god, I totally forgot about space penis. That was in there too. And then, of course, there was much judgment that the space penis was not decorated because if you're going to have a space penis, why not? Yeah, I was typing that, but you said it first. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> now I have stolen Heather's champagne and her thunder. I'm going to go back to teaching now. <clears throat> um, but thank you for being the bard of the stream for that, that particular <laughs> explication. <laughs> so, hey, today you've been bard and science friends, so do I just hey. get some points back yes, for that? Yes, totally. Yes. <laughs> okay, well. okay, so yeah, bail making pliers are definitely going to be an asset in this particular um, thing. Project. It's a project. That's what we're doing. Um, you're also going to need poundy stuff. You are going to need a <clears throat> chasing hammer and, of course, your bench block or bench block equivalent. If you don't have a chasing hammer, don't worry. Um, a household hammer will work just fine. And then you're going to need all of your various polishing things. So some fine steel wool, possibly some 320 grit sandpaper, possibly not. You may or may not need a flat file. Um, with the modification that I have made for tonight's stream, but once again, if you're fabricating, a file is never a bad idea to have on hand. Okay, so 
my modification does change the supply list slightly and only slightly. So online I said you need 18 inches of 16 gauge wire. So that means you would need four pieces at four and a half inches each. Okay, I'm adding one inch of wire onto that. So you now need 19 inches. So we're going to cut two pieces at four and a half inches and two pieces at five inches of my 18 gauge wire. So that is step one of this evening's tutorial is two. So you're going to cut four pieces of wire, two at 4.5, two at five inches. And then you're going to go ahead and measure and mark the middle of your 4.5 inch pieces. And then we're going to do something slightly different with our five inch pieces. So two 4.5, two five. Okay, so my 4.5 inch pieces, I'm going to locate a marker that's not a dry erase marker. What do I keep doing with my markers, Eric? Here's one that isn't mine. Well, okay, maybe, maybe that's, maybe I've just been throwing my markers at you secretively. I, it, mm, it wouldn't be the first thing you've thrown at me. That's fair. We've also been having lots of gravity incidents here at Painting Dreams today, so it yes. wouldn't be the first thing that the universe has thrown at any of us today. All right, so my 4.5 inch pieces of wire, I'm gonna measure and mark the center again. That was um, half of 4.5 is 2.25, so that's where I'm gonna mark that. Same with the other one. Yeah, there was a whole lot of, um, I think Heather, Heather and I both almost died from laughing quite literally multiple times last night, um, both on stream and off stream. Because of course there was also the whole Ziggy yowling chorus, um, which was a which was a pre-stream treat for <laughs> for <Scott>. only... <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> he did top the emoji. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> so we have we have an in-person Scott the guy emoji. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think the dropped beads multiply. I do. I think they breed down there. Okay. So my four and a half inch pieces, I have marked the center. Okay, so 2.25 inches from the end and I put a mark with my Sharpie. Now what I'm gonna do with my five inch pieces is I'm gonna mark one half inch from the end. I'm sure some of you have probably already figured out where I'm going with this. So I'm gonna mark one, I'm sorry, 0.5 inches from the end, which once again, since my skin is so wet, it doesn't like showing that. And then, from that mark, I'm going to mark 2.5 inches. So basically, I'm sectioning off half an inch on the end of my wire, and then I'm marking the center just like I did with my shorter pieces. Not 2.5, 2.25, two and a quarter. So, since I said some of those numbers wrong, let's go ahead again one more time. I'm going to mark off from the end of my wire 0.5 inches, and then from that mark, I'm going to mark two and a quarter inches. Ta da! All right, so now we're going to go ahead and, sh oh dear, we're gonna go uh -oh. ahead and throw my prototype earrings down into this like crevasse next to my computer. Um, okay, so now we're gonna shape the end of our earring. I'm sorry, I feel like there's so many things in the visual field at this point, including the stains on my work surface, oh, that I really need to replace this work surface. Okay, so we're going to shape the ends of our wire. So basically I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers those are the pliers I'm usually going to use when I am bending a sharp angle. And I'm going to grab right next to that 2.5 inch mark. So on my four and, or sorry, 2.25 inch mark on my four and a half. Um, that's going to be my center mark. And I'm just going to bend it up to make a V like so. Okay, I feel like there's just so much light. I set my exposures before the broadcast and... And then all of a sudden I look at it, I'm like, wow, it's really stinking bright. Like, nobody can see anything because, wah! 
So let's do this. Let's make that a little darker and let's make this a little brighter. Eep. Yeah, there. I think it's a little bit more reasonable. Okay, so there you go. V shaped bend right on the mark. Now, once again, and I know we've discussed this on stream before, if you have a mark and you want to create a bend right on that mark, you actually have to grab with your pliers next to the mark and then bend. And that's how you get the bend on the mark. If you bend, if you grab on the mark, the bend is of course going to be next to the mark. Now I'm at my five inch pieces of wire, which have two marks. They've got the half inch one and then they've got the two and a quarter inch one. That's the one we're going to grab next to. So what we're going to create here is we're going to create that same V bend, but it's not going to be even. Okay, one end is longer than the other. All right. Ta-da! Okay, so now I have four lovely little flying Vs. Now I'm going to make this curved part here. So this is where I'm going to use my bail making pliers for the first time. So I'm going to take my V and I'm going to grab it in my bail making pliers. And this is a little awkward because yes, you are actually holding right on the point. So you're just going to hold that nice and firmly and you're going to take your wire and you're going to bring it over. Ah. and across your pliers, like so. <laughs> Repeat. All right, so we're going to do that for all four pieces of wire. So, again, you got two or your ends are going to be noticeably uneven, okay? This wire here is noticeably longer than this wire here, all right? And then when you get to your four and a half inch pieces of wire, you should be even steven on both sides. So again, grab that in your bail making pliers, make sure you grab on that V and you're just going to do make sure that's in the center and then just bring it over and over like so. Now, what we need to do is we need to take our wires and we need to uncross them. We need to take them so that they, and make them so that they can parallel up from this shape we just made. So the easiest way to do that is to grab inside the shape with your chain nose. And I, I don't want to create a sharp bend here. Like I want to, I want to create a little bit more of a gentle bend here. So I'm not going to just grab with my pliers there and bend it straight up. I'm just going to brace with my pliers. I'm just going to gently bend my wires up so that I have that wire centered over essentially the central axis of the shape. And then I'm going to do the same with the other wire. So just kind of move your pliers around and just gently bend so that you get rather than a 90 degree angle, you get something that's a little bit more gradual and organic, like so. Again, repeat for all four pieces. And this is, this is one of those things that's a little bit more art than science. Like you just have to gently sort of persuade that wire that it, that it wants to curve upwards. And you do want to make sure that you don't do what I did. Okay, look at this. This, I let this go completely off center. That is not the ideal. Um, I think what needs to happen is this needs to come down. I think that probably happened actually when I was bending it around the bail making pliers. So we're just going to fix that a little bit and then just bend it again back up. Yeah. 
right, so that took a minute, but there we have that. Once again, this earring's kind of organic, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to... Be fun. <laughs> there. All right, repeat. <clears throat> you know, of course, this is the joy of earrings, is like everything is okay, you did it once, now repeat it four more times, or three more times, so you have four pieces. Uh, and last one. Okay, so once I've got four shapes that are relatively similar, again, the earrings are organic, so they don't have to be exactly the same. They just need to be sort of sort of similarly sized, sort of similarly shaped. Now I'm going to hammer. Okay, so this is where our hammer and our bench block come in. Um, so let's talk for just a second about, oh, yay for rainy days. And especially in Canada where they're, I think, still having a heat wave or having another heat wave or having weird climate changey crap going on. So, haha. <laughs> That does make sense. Also, new beads tend to make for, you know, yes, a, 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 an inspiration to do projects. Ooh. Okay, Sophia, oh. that sounds not awful. I would have to go for gluten-free biscuits, but yeah, I'm in. Let's I do it. I do love a Bloody Mary. Yes. Not a huge Bloody Mary person, but um, we have not done Bloody Marys on because, stream yet because yeah, I'm not a huge Bloody Mary person, but I, it might be a good quest of trying to find a Bloody Mary that, that has enough stuff, enough dressings to make it worth it for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are, by the way, so it is Martini Month here on the Beating Dreams stream, and this um, Saturday is the... Um, in honor of my birthday martini because my birthday is Friday so we are gonna do um, sidecars because I love sidecars and you can put them in a martini class and they're very pretty um, so sidecar we have done on stream before it's a repetition I know but it is one of my faves so it's gonna be we side like garnish these we well, we have because we have new pretty glasses thank you Sophia yes that was one of my birthday presents from my mama was two new martini glasses um, I'll let Heather Post the right side. I, I want to say it's bourbon, cognac, and lemon? Yes. Okay, bourbon, cognac, and lemon in no. some proportions. It's cognac, no? Yes. Orange liqueur. Okay. Isn't there orange liqueur? I don't remember. I'm looking at you because you're the one that knows things. Okay. I'm the one that. There's an orange liqueur. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Heather's going to put the recipe for the sidecar up because I apparently can't remember it. I know it's got lemon, and I know it's got cognac, and after that, I'm 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 done. Ah, uh, ew, well, that looks good. Oh, that and, does. And Sophia, I'm happy to take your Bloody Mary recommendations because that could be fun. But um, but yeah, sidecars for Saturday in um, my new pretty martini glasses, which are also quite capacious. So yay for that. Now we're gonna bang on things. So. Chasing hammers. We just have a general recipe Discord chat. Currently, that's where um, yes. Currently, that's where all the drink recipes and all the other recipes are are hanging out. So, chasing hammer is a hammer like this that has a convex head, um, and the point behind the convex head is that you can hit the, the metal with the center of the head of your chasing hammer, and you don't get a tool ring from the edge of your hammer on your metal. Now, if you don't have a chasing hammer handy or at all, once again, a regular household hammer is going to work just fine. And then you need something dense upon which to hammer, so this is just a stainless steel bench block. Alright, so the stream for just a moment is going to get loud. That means if you're going to mute me, you can do so now. I'm going to put each of these on my bench block. I'm going to hammer just the shaped part. Okay, I'm not going to hammer this. I'm just going to hammer basically this V and kind of curved bit that looks sort of like a lemon. So here we go, hammering now. I'm gonna hammer all four of them. All 
Okay. And that, I am pretty sure, is all we need to hammer, so I'm putting my hammer away. All right, now here we come to the modification, which is on your pieces that are uneven, all right, that have a long side and a short side, we're going to turn this long side into a loop, okay? So we're actually going to integrate the loop into the earring itself. So first thing we have to do is we've got to even these out because I apparently did not do, okay, this is, this is not cool. Like all of these different lengths, no bueno. So what we need to do is we need to take the three shorter ones and be norm. Terrible Quidditch. Yeah, well, there's a number of reasons I would be terrible at Quidditch. Number one being I'm not a wizard. That is I mean, I think one. that's like the first barrier of entry, and then we can talk about, <laughs> you know, physical prowess and hand-eye coordination and fear of heights and all of that. But, but I mean, if you can't even jump the first hurdle, then yeah. you're you're just kind of screwed as far that's as Quidditch true. goes. That's true. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we need to normalize the lengths of all three of the shorter pieces, okay? This long one should remain untouched. So... I'm going to cut all three of these short ones down to the same length as this one. Okay, so basically I'm, I'm not cutting three, I'm only cutting two because, you know, one of them's already short. Okay, and since earrings come in pairs, they come in just pints. like beer comes in pints. Okay, we also need to normalize the other ones, otherwise you can have one earring that's longer than the other. So once again, I'm just going to hold all of these together in one happy little earring family. I'm going to ignore my two long ones that are sticking up, and I'm going to trim everything else down to the same length. So there's going to be a little bit of just kind of happy little hair cutting with my wire. Also, super excited. I am a week from Tuesday getting my first haircut since pre-COVID. I'm so excited. My last haircut that I didn't give myself because those don't count <laughs> um, was was before Tucson of 2020. So it was like early February, late January of 2020 was the last time I got my haircut. I am so excited. I'm probably not going to do anything dramatic, so I'm going to show up on stream on Wednesday and you're going to be like, you did what to your hair? But like... <laughs> Get rid of all the frizzled ends. Like, my hairstylist is amazing. I used to have all these beautiful layers around my face, and now they're all, like, down here by my chin, which is less useful. So, anyway, super excited. That's all my troll doll. Beautiful. My layers Aww. are able to be held up over my head. Right? So, so yeah. So, super excited by my return to that one, you know, particular girly indulgence. Okay. So, now that we've normalized all of these, we should, if we were listening to your, your stream leader here, um, you should still have two long wires that are longer than everything else. These are going to turn into our loops. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to grab your chain nose pliers and you're going to, sorry, you're going to take your chain nose pliers, you're going to grab that long wire right at the point where the short wire ends and you're going to bend it 90 degrees like so. You're, of course, going to repeat with your second earring. Now, you could take this whole piece of wire and turn it into a loop. I think I don't want mine quite that big, so I'm just going to nip off a little bit of the end. So I have... So, yeah, so this is actually... Mine had extended to a little bit longer than half an inch, so I've, I've nipped them down to a solid half an inch and then I'm going to take my round nose pliers grab at the very end of that wire and then I'm just going to roll that back around my round nose pliers to make a loop so ideally now we're not going to have to add a loop to this, we're just going to have to solder this loop closed. Also, my angles here are looking definitely a bit wonky, so I'm just going to take this up and over so it kind of lines up over the center of all of that. Now I'm going to repeat with my other. So we're going to grab and pull. So 
go. And once again, a little bit of an, a weird angleness here, so we're just going to bring that up. And there we go. So, so ideally, what you want to be able to kind of visualize here is, okay, if I solder all of this together, I will have, you know, basically a functional earring. So now comes the part where we're going to prep <clears throat> all of this for soldering. I'm going to do two things. <clears throat> Number one, <clears throat> we don't want to solder this part together, like from, you know, basically the bottom of three quarter inches of our earring in order to make this sort of whirly gig effect, it needs to it needs to be free, not soldered together. We're going to solder all this together up here. So what that means is we need to take from that point, and we just need to bend this. And I'm just going to use my thumb to bend it outwards, so that it's not touching. Because of course, as I've said repeatedly on the Beating Dream stream, solder will not flow across a gap. So that means if I don't want these two pieces to get soldered together, I just need to bend them so that they're not touching each other. So it's, it's literally as simple as that. So I'm going to do that with all four of my pieces. Try and keep your bends kind of even so that, you know, you've got about the same amount of bent, bent stuff is really what I was about to say, bent, bent length on each earring. Why am I losing viewers? Where are you all going? Did I say something wrong? Do I smell on stream? I swear I showered this morning. It might have been me because I accidentally clicked out. Well, but, then I clicked back. but I've been le losing viewers. It's not just you. I, I went from like seven and now I'm down to three. Well, one of them was Scott and his work here is done. Well, that's fair. He has like a child to put to bed and things and feed. You're supposed to feed them. I don't know. I don't know if I'm down with this whole feeding children thing because then they get bigger. I know. And then they make me feel old. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just... Yeah, like my two adult nieces. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm just manipulating all of the wires with my hands, with pliers if necessary, so I've got maximum contact. Like this here? No bueno. All right? Oh, that's fair, Ace. So I'm not trying to criticize anybody who's not chatting because you had a draining day. I mean... She's just Once looking again, at the viewer you, you saw me in my train wreck stream this afternoon, so I'm there's no judgment here. I'm just looking at the viewer count and hoping I didn't do something to drive people away. I mean, sometimes you're just too tired to watch streams on Twitch. I know that because sometimes that's why I never rate. Okay, so what I'm what I'm going for here, what my ideal is, is this. Okay, so I want my two parallel bits to be touching and then I want to be able to put my two kind of winged out pieces together she says my two winged out pieces together like so and have decent contact here and then the pieces wing out there so all right and then we repeat with the other well, and you know, my, my Twitch actually shows me uh, zero viewer count all the time. Apparently, according to Twitch itself, I never have any viewers at all. Um, I have another piece of software that shows me a viewer count, which I'm assuming is slightly more accurate. But, but yeah, according to, according to Twitch, nobody likes me. No. What is it according to Twitch? It's, I don't actually think nobody likes me. I know, Twitch worst case scenario, at least Heather likes me. It's true. And I feel like I have a solid chance with Lori and Aso as well. Yes. And Snee, who is not on right now. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. Snee is distracted by in-person stuff. Yeah. Um, yes, hi, Sally Andy. Yes, I know. The thing I posted an hour ago, I'm not always the best with my social media posting being, you know, we properly timed. That. All I can say is I'm doing the best I can. Um, but yes, uh, <laughs> if I were on top of, I mean, okay, to be fair, my train wreck stream 
uh, this <laughs> this afternoon at noon, I posted the promo photo for the project a solid 10 minutes after I was actually supposed to be on stream with the project, and then I got on stream with the project 40 so, minutes late. So an hour, so great an hour early for today <laughs> is actually not bad. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's Allison's dead. winning. I'm I'm not losing. We're gonna go with that right now. <laughs> Currently, I am not losing, and hey, I'm back up to five people, so that's exciting. Yay. Okay, so <laughs> yes. Now I'm going to get ready to solder stop stop mm, solder these together. Talking's hard, but before we solder, of course. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, the stream can't start until I get yeah, here. That's um, true. We, now they say hello for a long time. It's true. There, yeah. there may not be anybody left here by the time the stream actually does start. But I mean, legitimately, there, is, there is no stream without me. Yes, I am drunk on power. Not really. Um, but just joking. <laughs> not even that. I mean, it's oh, I only like my second and a half glass. I know. But I had to say it. Fair. So, before, because I, I can't really get this ready to solder without <clears throat> holding it. So, we are going to go ahead and do the five point soldering safety lecture. Um, this is something that I, you know, five points that I just want, right, everyone to know before turning on a torch. Now, before I start my five point soldering safety lecture, let me just remind everybody that I am not a credentialed anything as far as yes torch solder every thursday on the beating dream stream is torch thursday so it's always a torch project on thursday nights so every thursday. <laughs> sorry it's okay i think amy just got on the stream because yep, i heard my voice my friends love so I'm not a credentialed anything as far as safety. I am not going to, which is totally fair. And we have some fun, and I have some fun in my head, soldering iron tutorials coming up. <clears throat> Just not tonight, but um, you should hang out, Silly Andy, if you want to and watch the torch tutorial because it's pretty fun. And um, it's it's not the same as soldering iron, but it's there are some principles that do remain the same. So. I'm not a credentialed safety anything. There's really no reason you should listen to me as far as safety concerns. I am just some rando on the internet, but I have been teaching soldering for a good minute now, probably about 10 years, and these are concerns that come up repeatedly as far as number one, creating a safe soldering workspace in your own home or garage, you know, wherever is, you know, your studio. And um, number two, remaining safe in a group work environment. So. Number one, try your best to keep six to eight inches of clear space around your soldering area at all times. That means six to eight inches that are completely free of anything that is flammable or meltable. Also, this flux jar lid has a message for you. It says, hey, guess what? Lots of things that are meltable, once they melt, are also flammable. Number two. Once you, had a, once you have had a flame going in your workspace from that point forward, always assume that everything in your workspace is hot enough to burn you because even though it doesn't look like it, a lot of things probably are. This is why tweezers are your friend when it comes to picking up anything that's been in your soldering workspace. Number three, ventilation is important. If you're feeling in the lung area, like you're coughing, hacking, wheezing, or feeling otherwise uncomfortable after you have been soldering, you may need to re-examine your ventilation situation. Number Four, if you're not actively soldering with your torch, just... Oh, no, Miss Space, nobody wants to become famous. I really need to fix that, like, thing and, and make famous a bad word on the Beating Dream stream. Also, Heather just went to the bathroom, so I need to remember how to be my own mod. <clears throat> anyway, so where was I? It was number four. If you're not actively... Um, if you are not actively doing something, if you're not actively, yeah, Amy wants to be famous. That's awesome. Um, I'm glad you do, but I want, uh, you to go away. Thank you, block. Yes, go away. Okay. So, sorry, apparently I really can't cannot multitask at the moment 
<laughs> um, but anyway, so, la 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 la, right, if you're not actively soldering with your torch, turn it off. These are very, this particular torch especially, very easy to ignite, very, very easy to extinguish. There's literally no reason to leave it burning if you're not using it. And God forbid, if it's, if it were to be burning on your workspace and then get bumped off, um, that's a whole world of trouble that you don't really want um, at any point in time. And then of course, number five, if you're doing this in your home workspace or if you're working in a community workspace, fire extinguishers are important. If you're in your home workspace, you should have a fire extinguisher within arm's reach. If you're in a community workspace, you should know where the fire extinguisher is. Um, and also, if you're in a community workspace, please make sure you follow any rules that that workspace has posted or put in effect for all of its users, because um, those actually are written by professionals, unlike this, you know, five-point soldering safety lecture. Um, and of course, generally speaking, the main purpose of all rules and regulations in spaces like that is just to keep everybody safe. So that's your five-point soldering safety lecture. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and light some torches. All right, so I'm going to take my two of my earring pieces and I'm going to lay them out on my soldering workspace. <laughs> and I'm going to lay these out. And once again, I need contacts. So this is always kind of a, an exercise in how can I get these to sit together well. And it's awesome when you, you know, do prep and then it's like, nope. Where I, I did prep this. You saw me. All of you are my witnesses. I did it. And now it's just being, okay, so I think what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang, hang that out. That's not even, huh. all I can say is it's been a day. I'm going to let that hang out there and I'm going to sweat some solder onto it and then I'm going to take this other one in with the tweezers and get them hopefully to bond together. So I'm going to flux this piece. So let's talk for a second about what flux is and what it does. So flux is a chemical that prevents your metal from oxidizing. So when you hit any metal that is base metal or has a base metal component with a torch, the first thing that's going to happen is your metal is going to oxidize. It's going to turn black. The problem there is that black oxide layer is a, a barrier through which your solder cannot flow. Also, I'm going to try and fix this so y'all can actually see this. Well, that's not helpful at all. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's not helping you see at all. This will be better. I'm going to refocus, re-exposure, and resume. Goodness gracious. Um, anyway, so the problem is that black oxide layer <laughs> extreme. I know, right? Welcome to extreme close-up being. It's so close, you can't even see it happening. But um, anyway, so the black oxide layer um, creates a barrier through which your solder can't flow. And so what we need to do is we need to prevent that oxide layer from forming. That's what the flux does. Yeah, so here's the problem with the six to eight inches of space is like, the camera doesn't zoom in that much. So if I keep six to eight inches of space, then um, you can't see what's going on. Because if I zoom that much, also it doesn't want to focus. Oh, technical lens. There right, we go. Hey, look, you can actually see a thing now. It's crazy. All right, so I have fluxed. Oh, right, there's, pe hey, people. Wow, lots of people just showed up. Hi, people. Um, welcome to, I'm about to light a torch. Okay, so, um, yay. More than three viewers. I love all three of you who were with me for a minute there, but um, <laughs> it's also nice to have more than three. So I flux this, so I'm gonna take my easy solder, whatever the heck I did with my easy solder. There it is. All right, and I'm gonna cut myself a couple of pieces. Now, typically, 
um, those of you who are regulars on the stream will know that I, I will oftentimes say um, it is astonishing how little solder you need to close a joint. Um, this is not one of those products. This projects. This is one of those projects that really benefits from a whole lot of solder. So I'm going to take my piece that I have fluxed and I'm going to take a couple pieces of solder and I'm just going to lay them across my wires like so. Okay, I'm going with three here. And now I'm going to sweat that solder onto my metal, hopefully without melting my camera. So sweating my solder onto my metal means that I'm basically going to melt my solder onto my metal and then I'm going to put my other piece on and I'm going to hold the two pieces of metal so they're touching until that and then I'm going to heat it till that solder reflows and bonds my two pieces together. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, okay, so sweat, 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 you know, right? I feel like with this sweat also, it's like sweat into the oldies, so you could also be expecting, um, it melts it, which is exactly what we wanted. The camera, I, what I, I don't want the camera to melt, the solder is supposed to melt, but who is sweating in the oldies? I can't, why can't I remember? Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons, thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold these two pieces together. In theory. And I'm gonna heat until that solder reflows and bonds everything together. So again, the, the melting of the solder was intentional. That's called sweating your solder. I almost feel like switching the position of these might be better. That one here. So this is where holding things are helpful. Oh no, oh, well, bummer. Good thing your dog is so cute. Exactly. What did they spill? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Oh gosh. See, this is where holding things are helpful. <laughs> right? Spilled your bloody <laughs> what, Sophia? <laughs> I, I only know because she was talking about it earlier. Okay, oh. <laughs> so I'm using my third hand now to um, <laughs> hold my piece. Once again, I have my solder sweated on here. Okay, so my solder's already melted onto that piece. Are you, oh good, you're no longer hot. That's exciting. I'm gonna make sure I have good contact. We have flux on here. And again, all right, so we're gonna hold these two together so that there's a decent amount of contact. Now the problem with the the butane torch that I'm using is it does have a bit of a limitation as far as heat goes, as far as how much metal you can actually get involved. And here's the thing. Okay, that's the perfect hold. So now let's see if we can get this to solder together. Um, here's the thing is that, that people don't always tend to think about is that tweezers and holding things are also additional metals. So let's talk while I'm attempting to do this. So hope, what I'm hoping is going to happen here in a minute is you're going to see that. You're going to see a line of solder come right between those two pieces of metal because we have soldered them together. Ta-da! You can't see because it's so close. See? It's soldered together. Um, now... All right, so we have some interesting things going on on the top of this. Um, so let's address those first and then we'll address um, what actually is a heat sink. So what's happened here is, all right, so I have successfully soldered this together. Woohoo, much yays. However, I didn't get it lined up quite perfectly. So I've got this weird sort of up sticking part. That doesn't actually really bother me so much because the top of the earring isn't really the focus here but what I do need to do and this is important is I do need to make sure that this loop here gets soldered closed if I wanted to I could totally chop these two pieces off 
um, and that would absolutely be valid. You would just, of course, need to make sure that you match your other earring to what you're doing. So the last thing I need to do in order to have a proper finished earring is I need to take that there and I need to solder it closed. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna just take a tiny little piece of my solder and I'm gonna drop that right on that joint. And then I'm just going to beat it until it flows. Go where you're supposed to go, 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 go. solder to melt and join those two bits together just like that okay so now everything is closed and secure I'm gonna take this I'm gonna drop it into the pickle we'll talk about that in a minute after I've done the other one that's gonna clean off and now I want to set up earring number two so let's start by sweating solder onto this hearing piece. Okay, so we're, uh, we are going to talk about for just a second, what is a heat sink? So, metal conducts heat. So when we heat any part of a piece of metal, we're essentially heating all of the metal. And the metal is trying to take all of the heat um, and conduct it throughout its area. So what that means is any part of our metal that we're not actively heating with our torch is essentially stealing heat from where we are heating and trying to redistribute it throughout the rest of the metal. So the problem here is that if we don't keep our entire piece of metal at or close to the temperature where solder can flow, it doesn't have to be at, but it has to be pretty close, um, what's going to happen is the heat sink effect is going to counteract our heat to the point where our solder is not going to flow and of course we do not want that. Okay, this is just not wanting to stay, which isn't nice. So what that means is every piece of metal that's connected to our project is a potential heat sink. So that, that goes back to what I was saying a minute ago and I'm going to try and sweat or melt these pieces of solder. I'm just going to brace my tweezers while I do that. So that means that any tweezers or third hands, anything that you're using clamps, anything you're using to hold this um, is potentially a part of that heat sink effect. And it's just something that people don't always think about because they think about the metal, like the actual metal that's part of your project being part of the heat sink effect, but they don't actually think about the holding bits as well. This one piece of solder is just like underneath. I don't want it to be there. Once again, I am looking to melt these pieces of solder. Okay, this is just no bueno. This is why you should not do things in any half acid fashion on the internet. I mean, or anywhere else, but <clears throat> now I have you know, two pieces of solder that are just kind of hanging out there, all because I didn't want to take the time to set this up in my third hand. <clears throat> third hand with cross locking tweezers, not actually on. The supply list but generally speaking a really good thing to have on hand for situations just one third hand. like this to have on any hand really first hand second hand third hand take your pick there yeah. um, so it's just gonna help me hold this so that i can there it is so that i can grab myself a solder pick and actually move these stupid solder jerk faces um, where i want them to go so we have one here, one here, and one over there. Okay, I can work with this. This is doable. Good. So remember, the goal is to sweat or melt my solder onto this top bit here. So I'm going to start by moving the pieces of solder that kind of slid to the side. So the reason I need heat to do this is because of the flux. So the flux is a paste that is liquid when it's hot and solid when it's cold. So 
once I let it cool down, it just sticks everything in place. But once I heat it up, I can pick up things and move them. So, uh, of course, the problem with that is in order to do that, I needed one hand for the torch, one hand for the solder pick, and one hand to hold the um, item, which, of course, is one more hand than most of us come equipped with in the factory standard model. Okay, so I did go ahead and I, I was able to get that to sweat on there, so now what I have to do is I've got to set all of this up in my third hand so that I can solder those together. And the fact that my eyes are refusing to focus is just amazing. They've had a long day. They have had a long day, it's true. Um, so yeah, welcome to presbyopia, which is what happens to your eyes when you apparently turn 42 in my case. Not yet. Okay, it's apparently what happens to your eyes when you're about to turn 42. When you're 41 and 365, or it's 364, 365. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's a lot of days. That's how that works. <laughs> Fractions still work though. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> And I don't know that there's any reducing that one either. But really, what the actual heck? No, there's no one. My nieces got so mad at me one year when I, they were little and I said that. They were like, no, I'm three and a half. <laughs> okay, okay, but, but this one's really better. You should, you should go with the, you should go with the math aunt on this. <laughs> well, now they know. <laughs> Now they go at the end on everything. Fair. So this one's not being as cooperative as the other one, so it's always just like finding that perfect grip. We're gonna go with, we're gonna try that. Alright, you all aren't gonna be able to see it quite as well as the last one, but hopefully it will still be somewhat obvious when it solders together, because hopefully it will actually solder together. Sometimes also when the metal gets hot, you can um, manipulate it a little bit more. Also the fact that solder flows towards heat is helpful in these cases. Alright, so the solder did flow, and at least part of my piece is soldered together. So that's helpful, because now part of my piece is essentially holding itself. So let's see. Do I still need to do? No, I did the same weirdo thing I did on the other one. This one's actually even more wonky, so I think I am going to win this pulls cut that off, but at this point I'm going to just be happy as a clam that mm, things are soldered together and I'm just going to solder together that loop just like I did before. I am going to flex it. One reason I'm really happy things soldered together is because I never flexed this piece. You can tell because this piece is black and this piece is not. As you can tell by this item in front of me, yes, sometimes you can get away without flexing a piece, but I wouldn't recommend it because your chances of successfully soldering a joint if you haven't flexed a piece are extremely reduced. I'm just gonna put that piece of solder there. That was a pick transfer. That's actually my preferred way of transferring solder. Um, it's a little bit more complicated though, so I don't tend to do it on stream as much. However, a piece of solder. So, with Fia, have you made another Bloody Mary yet? I hope. Possibly one for the doggo, too. You want for me? I'll be right there. Won't be right there. It's a solid 20 something. Well, God, to where Sophia lives now, it's at least. I'll be there tomorrow night. <laughs> right? I was going to say, it is, it is not, a, not a one day drive to where <laughs> Sophia lives now. Okay, so this is going into the pickle. That's going to do two things it's going to clean it and it's going to um, quench it as well. So let's talk for a second about what pickle is and what it does. So pickle is a weak acid solution. What it does is it cleans all of the crud. I'm trying real hard not to drop that on Heather. Um, it cleans all the crud off of your pieces so that you can polish them and make them pretty to wear. 
Um, <clears throat> the pickle that I use is citric, <laughs> citric acid, and there are a number of other compounds as well. But the whole point is you're going to put it in the pickle until it's clean, until all of the black junk is gone from it. And that's going to take a varying amount of time depending on a couple of factors, how hot your pickle is, how fresh your pickle is, and how hot your piece was when it went into the pickle. Since I did a really good job of preheating my pickle, and both my earrings were pretty warm when they went in there, they are both done pickling, except I jinxed myself. I totally jinxed myself. I put away my soldering stuff, and... One of these didn't work. Now, since it's already 723, I think I'm going to skip re-soldering this one back together, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, literally on, on this one, and I don't know if this was my first one, actually, surprisingly. Um, yeah, so I'm, I did successfully manage to solder my loop closed, and that's about it. But since this is <clears throat> a stream that's theoretically supposed to and around 7 o'clock, and it's already 7.23, I'm going to go ahead and just make one um, whirly gig earring for you tonight. So what I would what I would do, what I'm going to do at some point is I'm just going to try that again. I'm going to reset this up um, using my third hands and whatnot, and I'm going to just, you know, re-solder these bits together that didn't actually bond. But for now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to nip off that little weird bit on this one. I'm just going to take my wire cutters and cut that off. Since it is soldered on there, if I wanted to, I could actually take this and I could sand it or file it down, which is a bad idea. You can do that with a file, you can do that with 320 grit sandpaper, or you could do that with an emery board. But I can just take that down a little bit just so that it's not quite so obnoxiously pointy. So that just blends a little bit better. And once again, the top of the earring is not the focus of this earring anyway, so I'm not going to worry so much about the fact that the top of the earring looks a little weird. Now, at this point, what I have on the surface of my metal is a finish called Pickle White. Pickle White is a layer of fine silver particles. This is because of what actually happens when you put heat to an um, alloyed metal like sterling silver, um, the pure metal, the silver itself, does not actually oxidize. It's the base metal component of the alloy that oxidizes. So what that pickle does is it cleans away that oxidized base metal, in this case copper, and leaves a layer of fine silver on the surface. So all we have to do is just buff that. So I'm buffing with a fine steel wool. It's a quadruple zero steel wool. Um, what I would actually do and what I did on my sample earrings was I tumbled them. Okay, so tumbler is exactly what it sounds like if, if you had a rock tumbler as a kid. It's exactly the same machine. Um, but instead of being set up to um, polish rocks, which would be um, with grit, it's set up with stainless steel, shot, water, and soap. And so you put your pieces in and turn it on. The action of the tumbler either rotating or vibrating causes the shot to bang against your metal, and that's what gives you your shiny metal surface. Tumblers are by far the best way to polish um, kind of more complicated items like this. They take longer, but it's all, you know, inactive time. So basically, you know, I take this, I put it in my tumbler, I come back in, you know, three days, and, and it's all polished and ready to go. But, of course, we can't do that if we want to finish the project on stream. So steel wool will give us a nice satiny silver finish. It doesn't give us that super shiny silver finish. If you want a super shiny silver finish and you don't have time to tumble, a rotary tool and a buffing wheel is the way to go. So now the last thing we have to do is we've got to do our little whirly gig curls. So I'm just going to kind of start my two pieces going in opposite directions. And I'm going to take my bail making pliers and just grab the end of my shape and just start bending it around like so. And I'm gonna do the same with this one. And so they're curving the same way. Like so, okay, so you got that. And then I'm just gonna bring them down so that they are 
hanging out next to each other. Now, what you have to do to get this sort of um, look that I have here is you actually have to now take these guys, chain those, and just bring them a little bit out of plane so that they're more... Ah, you're... Mm -hmm. Heather is usually the problem. Is, is not usually the problem, <laughs> actually. Heather is usually the solution. Heather is the answer. Ooh, though I get to turn the answer tomorrow. I'm That's actually pretty, pretty excited exciting. by that. Yeah. So all I did is I just have manipulated these up and out to get that more kind of interlocked look. So basically you've got your curve that you just made and then I just bent them at a 90 degree angle to get my kind of whirly gig effect here. And you can mess with those wires um, pretty much, you know, they're annealed from your soldering, so you can mess with them um, a fair amount to get whatever look you want. So there's all kinds of cool things that you can do. Um, but I like this sort of, you know, one ends where the other begins look. You could even, and I'm kind of interested to play with this, is you, you could even drop like a gemstone sphere or something in there. Mm -hmm. um, I would be a little concerned, like you'd have to bend these sides up a little bit and bend these out maybe to hold it, but I feel like that could also be a really fun. Um, but yeah, so that's my Whirly Gig earring. So um, this is one that's, once again, a little more art than science, definitely a little bit organic, but really a fun, fun, fun project. And um, if you're not an earring person, this is also a really kick-ass pendant. And in that instance, I really would be tempted to throw a stone in there just to kind of see what it would do. So that's going to be it for our Torch Thursday stream. I did manage to create a single whirly gig earring. I realize most people come equipped with earring ears, not earrings, but ears in pairs. But hey, sometimes when you're streaming, you got to do what you got to do. So also today is just apparently not a good day for me streaming. I mean, I'm I'm so much happier with today's earring or tonight's stream than um, this afternoon's stream. So we're still on the uptick. And of course, I did forget to put the ear wire on. So it's not actually an, officially an earring until you do that. So take your ear wire, open it up, drop your earring component on there, close it back. And now I officially have one single earring. All right, so for anybody out there who doesn't know me, I'm Allison from Beating Dreams in Dallas, Texas. I'm having a bad streaming day, but hey, the good news is I'll be back tomorrow. So we are an actual brick and mortar bead store, Beating Dreams, here in Dallas, Texas. We're on Lover's Lane, and we are open for business here to feed your need to bead Monday through Saturday from 1 p.m. until 6 p.m. If you're not local in Dallas, you can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream five times a week. That means even if I screw up twice, I still have three more chances to have um, good streams this week. So we will be back on this channel, twitch.tv, thanks Lori, forward slash beating dream tomorrow at 6 p.m. with our free form Friday tutorial. That means that I'm gonna pick a project that interests me, a project that maybe I've been wanting to try, maybe something I'm thinking about for a future stream class, and I'm gonna make it on stream from start to finish. So it's not as um, much of a tutorial as uh, the stream you just watched. I'm going to narrate, but I won't necessarily explain everything I do. Um, and I, of course, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. Usually I have no idea what I'm going to do till I get on stream. These uh, earrings that I'm wearing were a frequent, sorry, were a Freeform Fridays class a couple of weeks ago, and those were really fun. So not quite sure what I'm going to do, but whatever it is, hopefully it's going to be something fun and something that will help you all learn some new and exciting skills. But for now, Heather and I are done with Hello. this evening's beating dream stream yes that means that we have just a little bit more work to do as far as closing the drawer and then we get to go home and wait work there yes, yes. wait a minute well, hey we get to change scenery change of scenery is good. Up our bras. <laughs> yes working without bras and in stretchy pants is yes. definitely the way to go at this point. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us on the Beating Dream Stream again. I'm Allison. The voice behind my computer is Heather, and we are here on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash Beating Dream, five times a week with complimentary tutorials. I'm working on next week's samples. We, of course, have some fun things for you coming up next week, Freeform Friday, tomorrow, and then on Saturday, we're going to be doing this one. This is, I've called our Peekaboo Earrings. This is a fun exploration of alcohol inks on metal so hopefully that'll be a good time 
Oh. Woo! Excuse me. No. Uh, for all involved, I can't drink because I don't have any more drink. Also, I need to remember not to wear white on Saturday. So, everyone have a great, because alcohol inks. Oh, right, yes. So, everyone have a great Thursday night. Have a great Friday day. And I will see you all back on this channel. Twitch.tv forward slash beating dream tomorrow at 6 p.m. Also wear gloves. Also wear gloves. Done with my work day. <laughs> <laughs>